this video I'm going to be assembling an Intel NUC. That stands for the next unit of computing. It's a mini PC that packs a big punch. Along the way I'll show you a few things that you might want to watch out for if you plan on doing this yourself, as well as demonstrating what it's capable of. Now the reason I'm getting a new PC is because the net top that I was using to demonstrate some of the dash cam software just isn't fast enough nowadays to play some of the 1080p stuff. I do still need a PC because quite a lot of the dash cam software is PC only. Now, I also wanted a small computer because I've got other plans for it. I've always wanted a MAME arcade cabinet, you know, an emulator with a lot of games in it, but I've never had the ability to make a cabinet. So when I saw the Picade on Kickstarter a while back, I backed it, and recently it arrived in a box full of bits that I'll have to assemble sometime when I've got the time. I don't know when that's going to be. However, when I've got it all together, it's going to look something like that. But the one thing it does need inside it is a computer. Now, obviously it's designed with a Raspberry Pi in mind, but a Raspberry Pi won't be powerful enough for some of the more elaborate games. So it is supposed to be compatible with lots of different types of mini computers, including an Intel NUC, which is why I've picked one up. So I'm killing two birds with one stone here, but let me just show you something first of all. Yes, that's right, the box plays the Intel jingle whenever you open it up, due to a little light sensor and a soundboard that's inside it somewhere. I thought that was quite novel. Now, this is the power brick for it. It's an international one. This one will work in multi-voltages. I just need to supply the cloverleaf to wall power uh, lead for that. This is the Intel nut. We'll just put that to one side. The rest of the things in here, there's a few little leaflets, there's a sticker there, and then down the bottom, I've got a metal visa mount to attach it to the back of a monitor or a television and the necessary screws to do that. Now, this is a kit, and this orange leaflet here recommends some of the things that you need to put inside it to get it up and running. Now you'll get even better information over on the Intel NUC support website. There's quite a few different models that you can choose from, but if you click through on the relevant one, you'll find that they list the different devices on there that they recommend you put inside it, the supported devices. Now I bought my NUC from the Amazon US store because I had some vouchers to spend there, but of course you can buy them in other places. Now I got this model and into that I added the following things, eight gigs worth of memory, a 240 gig solid state drive, and a wireless AC adapter, which is also a Bluetooth adapter. Now, if I hadn't got it already, I'd have to add some kind of operating system. I've already got a Windows 8 disk, so that's what I put inside mine. Now, the instructions are pictograms, which give you the impression it's gonna be as easy to put together as a piece of IKEA furniture but it's a bit more complicated than that. Now, the first thing I did was peel this piece of plastic off. Don't do that. You're better off leaving that on till the end because you'll get scratches on the top because you have to turn it upside down when you're putting it together. Just a tip there. Now, on the front here, we've got two USB 3 ports there, headphone out, and there's a little IR receiver behind this little bit here, which I'm also taking the plastic off. Doesn't matter about taking that one off, but I'd leave the one on the top till later. A Kensington lock hole there. On the back here, we've got vents at the top, an Ethernet port there, two USB 3s on there, HDMI out, a display port apparently capable of 4K, but I can't test that out, I've got no 4K display, and that's where your power goes. On the bottom we've got four rubber feet, which will stop it moving around. Overall, a very neat little unit, and it's got all the ports that I would need on something like this. Now these are the um, extra bits that I got, that I mentioned before, the 240 gig uh, SSD, uh, the eight gigs worth of memory on two four gig sticks and the little wi-fi stroke bluetooth adapter these are the three things i'll need to put inside it uh, so we can get it up and running so let's get going and put these things inside the nook the first thing is of course take it apart uh, you unscrew it at the base here where the four rubber feet are unscrew the screws inside those um, now one thing I did find once I'd unscrewed these it didn't want to come apart uh, it's so neatly put together so tightly put together uh, I had to sort of put this little blade under the edge here just to separate the bottom from the top uh, once I did that it came apart easily now this is what you get inside it. As you can see, very neat. Um, I've got the Core i5 version here, which should be nice and fast. Uh, 
I've got to put this memory in. Uh, now, if you haven't put memory in before, don't worry about it. It's pretty easy. I mean, obviously, there's going to be lots of people watching this video that know everything about computers and how to do this, but I'll show you just how to do it. You have to line it up with a little notch in the right place. It only goes in one way up. You put it in so that the um, little contacts disappear inside the bit at the end there and hinge it down and it clicks in place and holds in with those little arms either side. The next thing, I've got to put that Wi-Fi adapter in. First thing I have to do, unscrew this screw here, put it to one side. That's going to be used to hold it in place later on. So we just take that to wire out of there. That's going to attach to this as well. Again, this only goes in one way up. The little notch in there ensures that you can only put it in one way. Same as the memory, it goes in sort of at an angle and then you push it down. But this one doesn't have clips to hold it in place. And that's why we've got a little screw. It has to go through one of those holes in the end there. And you just tighten that up and uh, keep it in place. Now, this got a little bit weird. Um, these two wires here are supposed to just clip into the two aerial holes. Now, as you can see on the picture, the uh, grey one on the left and the black one on the right, according to this. Uh, so I'm going to follow that. I don't know if that's necessary, but that's what I plan on doing. But they've got these little plastic protective things over the top. That's presumably to stop them shorting things out if you're not planning on putting one of these in. But as it is... Um, trying to get these bits of plastic off here was a bit of a nuisance. I, I thought maybe I could like fold them back over on themselves, but they didn't want to do that. Um, and I sort of tried twisting them off and all sorts of things. Uh, in the end, I thought, I'll, I don't know, I'll just pull it over the top. Don't do that because this happens. Yeah, you just pull the end of the thing off. Brilliant. That's an idiot move and uh, no one should copy that. But now I've done it, you know not to do that. Uh, so a quick bit of soldering later on. I put that back on there after lots of swearing, of course. I also took the opportunity to cut the plastic back on those connectors so that they would go on properly this time. Now, these things are a little bit fiddly, but once you know the trick, it's not too difficult. You just have to lay them perfectly flat on top of the connector. Once they're there, uh, push down with your finger, you'll feel them click in place. So once they're in, they're in. They're not going to pop out again. They're quite good connectors once they're on. Hopefully I haven't damaged that wire with that bit of soldering, but we'll find out about that later on. Now the next thing I have to do is put the solid state drive in. It's the same thing again really. We have to undo a screw put it in the end there and put the screw back in. Now I know there's gonna be all sorts of bores going on about anti-static wristbands and don't do it this way and that way. Every time I do a computer video, I get all these weirdos come out of the woodwork. Well, trust me, if, if you wanna comment like that, then do so, but I'm not gonna read them, so you're just wasting your time. We'll put those screws to one side. We don't need two screws. Those just came with that in case we're putting it in another device. Right, so we're all done now. One thing about that base, I spun it around when I took it off and I wasn't too sure which way it went back on. It took me a couple of minutes to try it in all the different directions. It only really wants to go on one way. So when you take it off, just make sure you know which way around it goes again. Right, tighten up the screws and we're nearly ready to go. Just a couple of extra things. The first one is power. I had to get a power lead, a UK plug to Cloverleaf power lead uh, so I could plug it into that brick. And then the next thing is the operating system. I'm going to put Windows 8 on mine. Of course, that comes on a disc. Now, to get that in there, luckily I've got a USB DVD reader. If you haven't got one of those, you'd have to put it on a memory stick or something, but I'm going to do it this way. Right, so to get this up and running, I'm going to plug it into the television using a mini to full size HDMI lead. And I'm also going to put a few little things into here. First off, a USB keyboard, uh, one I've got lying around that came off that nettop PC that I showed you earlier on, as well as the mouse for that. Uh, this is just to get uh, past the setup menus and things. So I'm just getting some old stuff out here. In addition to that, I'm going to put the uh, disk drive into the, one of those USB ports in the front. So that's it. Once I tidy all this stuff up, ready to go, press the on button. See the blue light comes on there, as well as the disk drive light. Computer starts up, we get the usual sort of boot menu, and then it fails, of course, because it's not got an operating system. So this is my cue to install Windows 8 into this one. Of course, you don't have to put Windows 8 on it. You can put whatever operating system you want. Now, this is a Windows 8.0 disk. I imagine if you got this nowadays, you get an 8.1 or something, but I've had it lying around a while. I did originally have it installed on my Mac uh, on a larger hard drive I put in it, but the hard drive failed. So that's why I've got a spare disk at the moment. Right, so it's starting up now. It's uh, after uh, ages of this. Uh, I've skipped all that. It comes up, it starts booting up, it's ready. We're on, we're up and running. Um, now, I thought I was uh, golden here, and then I had a look, and it turns out the internet wasn't connected at all. 
So I did a bit more investigation. It turned out neither the gigabit ethernet or the Wi-Fi would connect up to the internet until I downloaded some drivers off the internet. So that's a bit of a catch-22. Luckily, I had this adapter, this Wi-Fi adapter, which once I plugged that into the USB port, it recognized it straight away. It would enable me to go on the internet, download loads of updates, and eventually the relevant drivers and things. Now, it's probably the version of Windows I was using. I'm not too sure, but it was a bit of a weird situation that I couldn't get the thing on the internet until I downloaded the things off the internet that would enable it to work on the internet. Ridiculous. Anyway, once I got it up and running, installed the relevant software, all the rest of it works perfectly. Look at the download speeds there, 105 megabits down, 11.71 up. And that's even with my stupid soldering job on that connector that I pulled off. So it looks like I didn't damage that after all. Now, so I could use a computer easier across the other side of the room, I got a wireless keyboard, a Logitech K400. Overall, quite a nice thing, really. It's thin, it's light, it's got decent keys on it. We've got a touchpad on the right here, two buttons below that, and we've also got a left mouse click at the top left if we want to press that instead. Pretty decent for £30. Now, as far as this computer's performance, well, it scores 2485 in PC Mark 8. I've got no idea what that means, but in real world terms, it absolutely flies for normal PC tasks. As far as games go, bit of a mixed bag, really. It's only got a built-in Intel Graphics 5000. It's all right for some games, but for others, it really struggles. To demonstrate it, I've got an Xbox 360 wired controller, which plugs straight into it, and it works straight away with Windows 8. And for games like Portal, which don't have particularly elaborate graphics, it's silky smooth, it's brilliant. I mean, if you wanted to play, what's that, Minecraft or something like that, I mean, it'd be perfect for that, and of course a lot more besides. When you get into games that are a little bit more graphically complex, something like Crisis 2, even with the textures turned down to low, I'm running at 1280 by 720, the frame rate's really quite low. It's probably in the sort of 15 to 20 frames per second or something like that. I mean, it is playable, but it's not exactly fun. But of course, it's not really a gaming computer. One of the things that knocked us particularly quickly is start up. From being completely off to getting up and running in Windows 8, ready to go, takes just over 20 seconds, which is a bit of a revelation when I compare it to my old computer. Of course, a lot of that is down to the solid state hard drive. Now, if you want to get hold of any of the things I've shown you in this video, there's a link in the video description. It'll take you through to my blog where I've listed out all the things I've demonstrated. So the NUC then, well, it's a very capable little computer. There are a few little hurdles that you need to get over it's not the kind of thing for a complete novice to computer, someone that doesn't understand how to download and install drivers, perhaps your granddad or something like that. But once you've got it up and running, you'll find that you've put together a very capable little computer. Yeah, it's not cheap, but then again, good things rarely are. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.